Hello and welcome. This tutorial will illustrate how to do a few different things in ISOM CFD, including patch independent Octree Tetra and then patch independent Delaunay and maybe even Prism. So we go here, we're going to import some geometry. In this case, it's a step file. Okay, here's the geometry. It's a, an intake manifold for V8. Uh, we can take a quick look at turning on some surfaces, make them, uh, or to use this button to solid display them. Just seeing, see what we have here. So uh, normally uh, an uh, initial step might be to set up the inlets and the outlets. So we would expand this, you can see the current part names. We will create a new part, inlet. It's like this is our inlet. And then we'll roll it over and create outlet part. And I'm just left clicking to select. Uh, you can hold uh, control key down and roll the model over and then release control and carry on clicking. The F9 key works the same way. Make the mouse button to accept and those are my outlets. Now ISM CFD has patch independence and this model currently has lots of these little curves uh, all over the place. And so what we're going to want to do, there's also some, some gaps and some other little issues but those aren't going to be a problem. So what we want to do is get rid of all these curves. So we go to the geometry repair geometry and then build diagnostic topology and what we can do is build a topology with a given tolerance and filter out the points and curves so if we leave those off for the first attempt just so you can see color codes all these as red meaning that they're connected if I filter those out based on an angle of 30 degrees now it leaves the ones between different parts uh, but because it's assuming there's a, a reason for that. If there is, then you then great. If not, you can always delete those curves as well. I'm going to delete uh, some of them just for fun. So we'll uh, turn off the surfaces. And wherever I have curves, my mesh will respect those boundaries, and where I don't, the mesh will ignore those boundaries. Uh, Alright, so going back to seeing my surface data. So next thing we'd want to do is set up our mesh parameters. So we go to the mesh tab. We start with global parameters. And globally we can set what our scale factor is. We usually leave that as one. What our max element is, I'm going to go with eight. And we can also do a, a sizing function, curvature or proximity based refinement. If I turn this on, now sizes are set by curvature or proximity. I can set a minimum size, which is the smallest that an element will get. I can set elements in gap if I wished. Uh, refinement, this is the number of elements in 360 degrees. I usually like 12 because it divides evenly. And apply. Uh, you can also set up other things in here. I can set up what my, uh, my surface mesh method is. By default it's quad dominant patch dependent, but I might want to change that to all try patch independent. Uh, I'm not going to use this for this method, but, but you can do it that way. I can also go and uh, set up my volume meshing parameters. There's lots of different methods, Cartesian or hexdominant or tetramixed. We're going to look at tetramixed, octree, and there's a number of options here for octree including uh, edge criterion and scorson and smoothing and so on. And we'll also look later at the Delaunay method, which ha now has an option for tgrid, tglib, and use advancing front. So we're going to use those two uh, approaches. You can set up memory scaling factor, spacing scaling factor, uh, you know, how fast you want the mesh to expand. If you leave it as one, it uses its own internal settings. You can set this to 1.1 if you wished. Apply. And there's lots of options here and you can read about that in the help. Uh, prism settings, these are the default prism laws, but you can you can adjust this from here. If you leave it without an initial height or a total height, it floats the prism layers. Uh, minimum prism quality and so on, it can, can all be set up uh, in here. So those are all good, I'm just going with defaults. Now let's go look at the on an individual part by part. You can look at part mesh setup. Uh, I haven't set anything here, but if we wanted to, we could set our max sizes. Maybe we want to set everything to 8. Now remember, it won't all be 8 because we set a minimum size based on curvature. Uh, you can set things like height, uh, which is the height off the wall, the ratio, uh, the number of layers if you wanted something to be prismed. Uh, so maybe we want uh, everything to have prism except these two. And uh, everything else can have prism on the walls. You can set maximum width and if something's an internal wall or a split wall and so on here. You can also set specific sizes on specific entities. We could use surface parameters to set up surface mesh size. Uh, on individual surfaces where we could control uh, different things. Uh, we could also do it by, at a curve level. Individual curve parameters can be adjusted. Uh, we can do it in the volume with densities. So now having set up the geometry and the mesh parameters, we can proceed to meshing. 